What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking Watchmen Episode 2. It just premiered on HBO. I will be talking spoilers, so if you haven't seen the episode, maybe come back later. But right now we're going to talk about it. I need your comments down below. Did you enjoy this episode or do you hate it? So... Let's talk about it. So as Angela relives haunting memories of an attack on her family, she detains a mysterious man who claims responsibility for Tulsa's most recent murder, and an original play is performed for an audience of one. Alright, so Watchmen Episode 1 premiered last weekend. That video was pretty fun to make. I enjoyed the episode. I was just kind of intrigued. I was a bit confused during the episode, but I'm like, okay, they're setting up things that I'm just interested to see where they're going to go. Taking a peek into the comments section, it was a pretty divisive show. Some people were just telling me how much they hated me and the premiere and how it was a travesty and just, it, it tore their lives apart. So one, we're going to see how many people stuck it out to episode two. Maybe this one plays a bit better because I did find this episode to be uh, a bit more straightforward than the previous one. I wasn't as confused and I don't say confused in a bad way. I'm just, uh, I'm intrigued. I want to see where all of these storylines are going to go. I want to put the puzzle pieces together as we go. And I feel like Watchmen is a show that people are going to look back upon when it's all said and done, when all of the episodes of season one have come out and they're there for people to watch. They're going to look back at the first few episodes if it works out in the way that I hope it works out. If it doesn't work out, if it falls flat, well, then it's not going to be good for them. But if the show ends up being good, they're going to look back and say, you know what, the first few episodes, they're dropping clues and hints. And this is a show I truly believe you have to watch more than once. A lot of clues, a lot of hints, and once we start getting our answers, we can come back, kind of like an M. Night Shyamalan movie, it's an odd comparison, but we can come back and see what they were planting for us to find out out later on in the series. So, did I like this episode more than episode one? Probably not, but I still enjoyed it for what it was, right? It is definitely much more straightforward what the storyline is now. We're trying to uh, figure out, hey, who's the old guy? That's the answer we had at the end of the previous episode, and what does he have to do with Judd's murder? We know um, he was involved with it. We're still not for sure if he did it, but the way this episode ends makes me think, yeah, he does have friends in high places. <laughs> we'll get to that here in just a second. There were some lines in this episode that I really liked. She's really good, Regina King's character, she's really good at painting that stuff on her face. She always gets it so precise and, and pretty. Like I said, a lot of cool lines for graphic novel fans in this episode. They are hinting at Dr. Manhattan so hard. I mean, we get his origin story play later on in the episode, but there's one point where someone goes, maybe I'm Dr. Manhattan, and somebody else says, well, he's on effing Mars. And it's like, we're getting hints. Are they going to show him this seat? That they have to show him. They've teased him. They teased him in the promo for the next couple of episodes, and we'll probably get him by the end of the season. But uh, some really uh, interesting dialogue between these characters as well. Gosh, guys, I love Tim Blake Nelson's character of Looking Glass. I love the way that he goes about his dialogue, just so slow and precise. When they're sitting in the car having that conversation, he says that he's actually crying under his mask. When he's sitting and eating, watching the television special, he just lifts it up right Right above his nose just to eat right he never takes it off because the mask at this point is him that is his persona and it's really cool to see that character development already beginning to progress in the first couple of episodes the scene where they flash back and show her get shot that spot that she was talking about in the last episode I really love the way that was shot it was intense I like the camera movement and the score during that scene, but during the entire episode. My goodness, one of the best scores on television. It is haunting when it needs to be. It flows from scene to scene, and speaking of flowing from scene to scene, the cut where she's walking towards the tree and then it cuts through time where they're confronting the people that they thought are responsible. That transition was just like glorious, man. They kept her in focus in the center, and they just cut around her, and I'm like, as a fan of editing... Y'all nailed it. <laughs> we had answers as to where their kids come from. The American Hero story that's playing on TV. We get our first look at what that's all about. They teased it throughout the first episode. And we get our look at Hooded Justice just bashing the guy's brains on the counter. I thought that was so cool. If you guys don't know who Hooded Justice is, basically the first masked vigilante in the graphic novel made his public appearance in autumn of 1938 where he stopped a gang from assaulting a young 
couple. And according to Phantom, a week later, he intervened in armed robbery to supermarket. That's how he got his name, Hooded Justice. And that was what they were showcasing in the episode. It was a really cool graphic novel moment come to life. And I just love the way that this thing is filmed and directed. And say what you will about the story. And I know it did get a bit more convoluted <laughs> towards the end. I do have more questions. And I'm just, I'm trying to figure out what exactly is happening. But the filmmaking is really good. I don't think anybody can argue that, even if you don't like where the story is going. And then the big moment in the episode is where Angela finds, uh, finds the outfit in the closet and discovers that Judd was actually a Klansman, and it looks like he is semi-responsible for a few of the things going down, and he was really the guy behind it. So at this point, his death is kind of justified. It makes me curious about their relationship and why that was built up the way that it was and why he treated her with so much respect. Maybe it was him to try to make do with his past, or maybe he was still part of the bad things going on. We will definitely learn more as we go. I know we are going to get these answers. It's just how patient are you? Normally, I'm not that patient, but with a show like this, as beautifully made as I believe it is, I'm willing to wait. I'm willing to see a lot of really cool things set up in this episode. We got the Ozzy Mandez, uh, Dr. Manhattan reenactment with his little crony robots, the clones. It looked like clones because, I mean, that guy was just burning to a crisp and I saw flesh. So, <laughs> but man, they went all out on that Dr. Manhattan reenactment. It was very accurate and I appreciate that. And it was a, uh, it was a play for one. I'm curious as to why he's doing that. I mean, sure, it's like a slow descent into madness. The guy is still losing his mind at this age, but what is he planning? We got to get into his plan at some point. And if you saw the preview for the next episode, it looks like we're going to get at least a taste of that. And then while well, I mentioned the big moment, well, another big moment at the end is we learn that Angela is the old dude sitting in the chair's granddaughter. So we got to look into his past, the, the Tulsa massacre at the beginning of the first episode and how um, how he came to be, right? Now he's old. We don't know what association he is part of. We know he has friends in high places. And now we know that our main character is his granddaughter. So how is this going to work? How does he tie into the murder of Judd? We know he had a hand in it, and it looks like we know who's helping him now. And who who's the people with the big magnet? Just grab the car and just fly him away. Like I said, guys, a lot of questions that I'm asking, but I was really intrigued by so many moments in this episode. I'm really digging this series so far. I think it's artistic. I really like the film style. I know a lot of people are going to have issues with the story. I found that out last week. And I know a lot of people are saying it's an offense to mankind. But if you're watching this video, you obviously made it through episode two, which means you're sticking with it for a reason. Maybe you're waiting to see if it gets better or something got you in that first episode. Whatever it is, hopefully it's making you think. It's definitely making me think. Not everyone is going to enjoy this series for sure, but I want to know. This is all about the discussion from you guys. This is not all about me giving you my thoughts and that's it. No, I need you in the comments section. Comment your thoughts on episode two. Go at it in terms of spoilers. I would love to see that. And if you enjoy these Watchmen reviews, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does, one, help out this video, two, help out this channel, and it lets me know that you want to see more. If you guys don't want to see more, you don't have to, but I enjoy doing this, so I would like to have a reason to keep doing it. I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you're asking why there's no DC posters, well, I have this giant one here. Got a few DC posters in the background, but I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put that little guy. We've been doing some rearranging with the set. You don't care about that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Lots of really cool things coming out this week. We have Apple Plus dropping. We have Netflix, some box office videos. We're talking so many things. Terminator Dark Fate on Tuesday, so that's going to be fun. You guys are truly the best. Thank you for your support. I'll see you soon.